Hello, welcome back to Rabbits Forever. So today I want to go over how to evaluate a mini lop rabbit. I've had these for a short time, but I already kind of understood the body type because these are one of the larger breeds of um, compact body types. And I actually believe this is probably the largest breed of compact body types. The hardest thing for me to get down and understand was the head. Because the head is almost 50 points of the total overall score of this breed. So I don't know the exact points on what, on the head and the ears and the fur and the how thick the ears are and the boldness of the eyes and teeth and yada yada yada, crown, all that. I chose this boy today because he does have the best overall head of all my mini lops that I have currently, which I don't have very many. I only have three, so wasn't the hardest pick in the world. But as you see from this view, here I'll scoot him closer, but as you see from this view, he has a very well-defined crown. And the crown is this part right here. It's actually the cartilage of the ears, base of the ears. And if it's slipped or something, you're not going to see this well-defined crown right here. You can also see his ears lay flat to his head pretty much. I mean, they're kind of angled out because they're sitting on the carpet a little bit. And his shoulders are there too. He does have a little bit of a dewlap, so he would be docked for that, but <laughs> overall his head is very good on the crown part. Now, sorry, I was just checking his ear. Now for his head overall, you really want a nice, full, bulky head. Something that's short, it's nice and wide at the mouth. And it's really nice and wide up here at where the crown is. And he demonstrates a pretty good head. I don't really think I would change anything. And even from the side view, you can tell he has a very short, bulky head, as he should. Another good thing that you can tell from the side view is his ears sit right behind his eye, which is where they're supposed to. Now, if they sat a little bit forward, I honestly wouldn't complain, but just plopping his ear down and actually not having it go back, because mini lops, they still do have a little bit of control over their ears, because their ears aren't massive, so they still do have a little bit of ear control. So you'll see them doing this while they're grooming themselves and stuff. You'll just see one random ear go up and then flop back down. Or they'll do the whole ear airplaning trick where both ears are kind of sitting out. Which you can see from the front view better. They'll stick both of their ears out like this as their little airplaning trick. Now if a rabbit does this consistently, that typically means their crown is too short up here so instead of a nice wide crown it's a short crown which gives them better control of these ears and you don't want that the ideal mini lop doesn't really have much control of their ears at all if any and that just means that their crown is nice and wide honestly if this boy had a wider crown i wouldn't complain but i'm not complaining with how wide his crown already is because he's got a beautiful head on him already. So tricks that I've learned so far breeding mini lops, like I said, I haven't been breeding them very long. So the tricks I have learned from judges and showing and talking to other breeders who have been breeding them for a lot longer is when you find a mini lop that, especially at a young age, because at a younger age, they have a lot more control of their ears. But if you find mini lops that are younger, and I am going to do a video on the kits that I have currently and little tricks to kind of help you evaluate them at a younger age, especially the head, because the head is the most difficult part probably overall on the mini lops because their heads keep developing almost all the way up until they're seniors. 
and sometimes depending on your lines, even past them being seniors, some of them don't stop developing their head until they're about a year old, which you usually have already sold your st the babies at that age. But a trick to learn is if their ears are airplaning at a young age, you immediately cull them or sell them because that means their crown, like I said, is too short. If their ears are laying nicely next to their face, then that means it's an overall wide, nice crown. And then, ooh, sorry, I'm not using my typical, um, my usual show table because it would just give an awkward angle for you guys. But a good thing, again, is you want this ear right behind their eyes. And at a younger age, their crown's still developing and everything. So you're not going to see that perfect ear on them at such a young age. And you want to see a nice wide ear base. So I kind of struggled with this to begin with. But what I've noticed is that rabbits that don't have a nice wide ear base will typically go in and their ear will pop out. And you'll see like a little indentation where the ear pops out, kind of like that, how it looks. His doesn't have that, because he does. He has a very nice wide ear base. My other buck that I was using as a breeder, Spotless, that you've probably seen in many videos, has that little indentation right there, where it's in and then all of a sudden the flap of the ear comes out. You don't want that. You want this nice wide ear because then that signals that the crown is going to be very wide up top and you're going to have a lot of definition there. And then you also have to deal with slipped crowns, which means that, like I said, you're not going to see this crown very well and the ears are going to be way back and they're not going to be right up next to that eye like they're supposed to. So you can tell I don't work with him all that much, so he's kind of fidgety. But he's doing pretty well, honestly. I've just been letting him settle in because I did just get him a short while ago. Now, how to tell body type. This boy has an incredible body on him. Now, I've gone over this in other videos, but I typically put my this knuckle part right over the eyes because the eyes are on the side of the head so you don't have to worry about you know grabbing their eyes or anything and then i'll typically grab below here and it's just a gentle it's just something so that way you can move the head if needed and this finger kind of just sits here so if i do need to i can grab above if they're trying to pull back or you know if this boy as you see he's gonna work perfectly for me now again, he has an absolutely gorgeous body type, but today we're going to go over all the things that I personally see wrong, but there are very few things about this boy that I see wrong. He is a gorgeous animal, and as long as I'm breeding mini lobs, he's going to be staying here for a very long time, because not only is he gorgeous, but he's a very sweet boy. And as you see, as soon as I lift my hand off, it kind of screws up all of his fur on his face. He's not very happy. But first you want to start at the shoulders. Now, if you feel any space in between the shoulders and the neck, that typically means that they have longer shoulders. In him, he has a very good shoulder base because his, his back arch starts right here, which is right where the shoulders begin, pretty much. If he had any shorter shoulders, I don't think it's very possible, maybe a tad bit, but for him, that's a very good start. And on mini lops, their neck is supposed to be very short as well, which usually you don't have an issue with because most breeds have a nice short neck. So you usually don't have an issue with that, but you just look right there. You can't really see it on him because he basically has no neck, <laughs> but yeah. And then you want a very steep rise and what the, so I actually purchased this bunny from Oz. He was, he won 
Arba, can, well, he didn't win the convention, but he got Best of Breed in Mini Lops Convention 2019. And this boy is actually his Best of Breed son. And that's another reason why he's going to be staying for a very long time, because he has amazing genetics. But um, what he taught me, because he's been in this for years and years, I'm not sure how long, but quite a few years. He's been working on this breed for a very long time. But he said the depth of your animal, because a lot of us just strive for deeper and deeper and deeper animals. Which is good, don't get me wrong. We should always strive for better, but the depth of the animal should match the length and the, and the width. So, if you're looking from above, the width, or yeah, the width of the animal should be the same as the depth and the length. And that's when you know you have an overall really nice animal. Because then you get that overall perfect circle on the body. I don't know. Let's sit you. And that's just kind of a trick that he taught me a few years back, actually. And then, so he's very, very nice. When you feel over their body, make sure that the animal is properly actually posed, which I have a video on that, of the commercial breeds, which is basically the same thing. You want their front feet to line up with that eye. And that just means that their shoulder or their uh, yeah shoulders are right up against that ground, which he's not. He's kind of tensing up. And that's when you kind of start wiggling and you'll see judges doing this on the table because they want those up against the ground or the showing table. And then you want to kind of push them back and then you want these knees right up with those hind toes which you can't really see on him which is good though because then that means he has a nice wide base to him Ooh. all right he's posed pretty nicely his fur here kind of keeps standing up but he's posed pretty nicely right now maybe not as tight as he could be but that's fine because you can still overall judge the body now, if you feel over, you can kind of feel right when, right when the animal starts sloping off, which is right about here, which is right over that flank. And that flank is just the bend of the knee. I went over this in a previous video, but I'll go over it again. The flank is just the bend of that knee right there. Now, a lot of breeders and what we've been really striving for in all breeds, not just mini lops, it doesn't matter what breed you're in, we're all striving to move that peak back because it's actually supposed to be over the center of that hip right there. And that just leads to a deeper animal and then a nicer slope off, which he probably shouldn't be that deep, but, you know, nobody's going to complain. <laughs> yeah, so... Personally, in him, I would like to move that peak back a little bit. I think he is overall about as deep as he is in length and probably almost as much as he is in width. I don't see much issue there. His sh shoulders, I honestly don't think, could get much shorter. If they could, my doe will definitely fix that because she has basically nothing there. Which also, another thing is that if you have a really lengthy animal, there we go, sorry, you guys aren't really looking at them from the right perspective, but if your animal is a very lengthy animal, that is usually due to the sh shoulders, because the shoulders, especially in other breeds, I used to breed Rex, and the shoulders are really hard to shorten up without ruining the rump. And that's another thing to look at is you want exactly what you see here. He has a very wide base here. And I'll flip him over and show you how I can tell that from just look. Because here, you know, sometimes they have that butt fluff and stuff, which he definitely does. He's a very big boy. <laughs> but, and then you don't want to see any pinching along here. You want to see it just gradually gradually go over you don't want to see any pinching so it's not like all the way down here and you don't see any divots you just want to see a nice 
round butt, which I know is weird to talk about, but that's essentially how you evaluate the rear end. And that'll tell you a lot of things that are structurally wrong is just looking at the rear end here. And I believe I covered that in my last video as well, so I'm not going to cover it in this one. But because if you're not good at really telling type here, a few tricks or if you're missing something from up here, because pictures can lie. Pictures can definitely lie when you're talking to a breeder. Because sometimes they'll angle it a little bit somewhere instead of taking it right on. Like, you guys are looking at him right on. This is exactly what I would send as a picture or try to send as a picture. Because sometimes rabbits fidget like he is now. And then I would have to readjust. His shoulder's not properly aligned. Um, and then I'd have to readjust and it just takes a lot of time. So if you have 50 plus rabbits or whatever... That can be pretty difficult, or if you, you're just really busy that day, that can be pretty difficult to do. Because sometimes a perfect picture doesn't come for like 30 minutes if you have a really fidgety animal. Him, I could probably move away, snap a quick pick, and then be done. But you'll see when I pull out the babies, that isn't always achievable. So... Again, another trick is to look at the butt, which again, I believe I went over in a previous video. And then another thing is, is to look at the top view overall. You can see a lot of flaws from there too. But one thing I did want to go over before this video ends is the feet, and he's not very happy with me. But I want to show how wide his feet are. Hey, come on. Shh. He's not very happy with me. This might take a couple of tries. But you can see that his feet are basically parallel, and he is holding this foot out a little bit. He is basically parallel. Oop. Yeah. And, ooh, heavens. He has some sharp suckers on him. Which, yeah, his feet are parallel, which is exactly what you want to see in any rabbit breed. If they're cocked to the side or kind of V-shaped, then that usually means they have a pinched loin or, you know, they're just pinched overall in the rear end. And you don't want that. You don't want to work with that when you're breeding because that can be difficult to work with. Another thing is you want to see very wide feet. And that just means they have a really wide stance and they're a wide animal overall. So I love when breeders will send me photos of the feet like this because then I can tell what I'm expecting for the rear end because that's a very important part to evaluate while breeding. And yeah, that's just a, little, a few little tricks on how to overall evaluate a mini lop overall. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.